In this video, we'll talk about how to connect the graphical user interface that we designed in the previous video to MySQL database. So come and watch. Hello there. Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll keep working on the same project. Uh, last time we designed the graphical user interface for the login form and we finish all the design. We work on the code behind. So I will leave the link for that video in the description box below. So make sure to watch this video first and then come and watch this video here today we'll talk about how to connect this interface that we designed this graphical user interface to the database and to access the database so let's do that now this is the interface and as we mentioned we are working on scene builder which will make the your life much easier to drag and drop the controllers on the form and that's it so now let's go back to NetBeans and here is the NetBeans project that we worked on, the Java project that we worked on last time. And here I will insert all the code that related to connecting to MySQL, retrieving the data and uh, searching for the results. Again, there is another video that I talked about how to connect to the database, to the server, to MySQL with all the instructions with all the mysql statement with all the sql statement select statement insert and much more so you can watch that as well and i will leave the link in the description box below now i will insert the code here so last time we designed a button as you saw it in the scene builder here let me show you here this is the button and this button is connected to a function or a method and if you go to the code tab here you can see that this button the name of this button and here is the method that will be triggered in case of anyone clicked or in case that the user click on this uh, login button so now that's why this the code that will be triggered now there is no need for this one now and here i will do a couple of things before i go and insert the code to connect to the database i will add some public variables here outside the method which represent the connection and the prepared statement that will be used with select statement next i will insert the same code that we wrote last time and here is the first part i am copying it like the same thing exactly i don't want to waste your time so just copy it and paste it from the previous video and here what i did i used the try catch block in case that we have any exceptions and here is the connection and we use the connection to connect to the database and to the server mysql this is the username and this is the password all of these details were explained in details in the in the previous lesson so uh, again before you execute this code before you run your project make sure that you have your mysql server is turned on as i taught you last time so if you go to administration here in this mysql workbench environment start shutdown you can see that the server is running so make sure it's running if not just start it by clicking this button so again this is the first thing i am i will get rid of this statement and here j option pen this is another option for you to display some messages in a box in a small window so this is this is the message that will be shown so let me run it for now and let's test this so to know if everything is going well you see that so the interface is popped up and here i will enter the password you know that we didn't finish all the required code but just to test the connection so if i click login this function here this method will be triggered and now you can see that here is the dialog box that I referred to and it's saying database is connected successfully. So now you know that it's connected and there is no problem. So again, I will stop this code, stop it, yes. And this line closed 
the dialog box to be appeared on your screen okay in case of an exception then this will be triggered here and the statement will show the error message for you if everything is good and the connection is successfully done and it's connected successfully now let's go next to the next statement and here we'll be using the prepared statement that we talked about in the previous video and this will accept some parameters the username and the password so these are the question marks are placeholders for the input the user input and uh, we'll execute this statement with an execute queries instruction later on that we will be using so now let's go ahead and connect these placeholders to the text fields that we have so we have two text fields as you can see here the first one is the username and the second one is a password as we declared them in the previous lesson so here we are saying the first placeholder which is go with username will get the username text and the second placeholder will be the password and the text that the user entered in the in the text field or the password field that we have on our form okay great so now we have this prepared statement and now let's execute it's time to run and execute and see if we are good if we find this these credentials so that's why i'll create the results object and here is the statement that we talked about the select statement and now we are executing the query executing the statement so the select statement will be executed now if the results has next has something has some records then i will use the dialog box to print welcome and then the result that gets string and to represent the second field the index of the field which is the username okay and in case that the credentials are incorrect then we will display another dialog box showing that this is an invalid username or password we don't want to specify which one is incorrect for security reasons now if we are done then for now we will write the statement to exit just exit the system and that's it in the future we will have another form that will transfer the user from the login interface to another window or another interface to start accessing your system so we will be building a complete system now let's run this code and let's test our work here the username i have the username that i no, it's already saved in the database and this password you see it's covered and then when we click on login then this method will be triggered the connection is successfully and look at this welcome and this is the username that here the user entered welcome and user and this is triggered from this statement number 51 the line number 51 okay click ok and we are done now let's run it again and let's try that if the user enters something wrong ASD and here ASD or whatever and login connected and look at this it's saying that it's invalid username or password so uh, this is the project and make sure to subscribe turn on the notification bell to be the first one receiving the next video that we will build continue building our project and we'll have some projects to to do together we'll learn a lot i hope you enjoyed this video and learn something new thank you for watching and see you next time goodbye